I thought today I'd do a remake of a fairy tale or fable and came across Aesop's Fables for Children. I soon realized the fables forced the lessons to the story in a way that the lesson only made sense from one perspective. Take for instance the fable of boys skipping rocks on a river. This terrified the frogs who had to dodge the rocks and asked the boys to stop their fun at the expense of the frogs. Now, frogs can easily stay underwater for several hours. Do they really think the boys would be skipping rocks for four hours? And besides, frogs eat insects. Do they ever bother to see things from the insect's perspective? Anyway, moving on. Then there's the thirsty crow trying to reach some water at the bottom of the pitcher. He inserted pebbles until the water level rose to where he could drink. Sadly, Aesop apparently never learned about cubic lattices in high school chemistry. Otherwise, he'd know that the water would have filled the space between the pebbles and the crow still wouldn't have been able to drink. The crow was made to look stupid because of Aesop's ignorance. Poor crow. Then there's the two goats who plummet to their death. They're crossing a river from opposite directions on a fallen tree, and the fable says the tree was so narrow even two squirrels couldn't pass on it. Now this is ridiculous. Squirrels could easily pass, one running on top of the log and the other below, or each on a side. I guess Aesop never observed squirrels in a tree. Moving on. Then there's a lion and the donkey. The lion is proudly walking by the other animals when a donkey makes a scornful comment. The lion, seeing it's a donkey, doesn't waste his time with a response because it came from a donkey. But what if the donkey's comment were warranted? Perhaps about vanity or arrogance? No, we don't get to see things from the donkey's perspective in this contrived fable. Sorry, donkey. If only you were a flying, talking donkey, then maybe the other animals would take you seriously. Then there's the fable of the oak and the reeds. The oak was proud to stand tall against the wind while the reeds bent under the pressure but then a hurricane uprooted the oak. But the oak, beyond its youth, cannot sway with the wind. Are the children to learn that sometimes one must do the impossible in order to survive? But then there's the fable of the dogs who try to drink up a river to get to the food at the bottom. They all burst, even though I find it hard to believe that a dog could possibly drink so much water it would actually burst. But the lesson is not to try to do the impossible. So no sooner than we learn that the oak should have done the impossible, then we learn not to try the impossible. I think old Aesop simply made up lessons as he went along, and for millennia afterwards, children were left trying to make sense of this nonsense. Anyway, have a great day.